What's up guys? Uh, I just got back from Florida yesterday and I'm back in Atlanta having to fly. It is a lot nicer than it was when I left. It was like 30 degrees or something like that for people that know Celsius that's like negative <laughs> one. Very cold and um, so yeah I'm just flying out here in the field over by my house. It's it's pretty dope honestly. I haven't flown and gotten to fly like a mob of packs in a while so it's, it's really nice to be able to get out and do that. And uh, I wanted to talk to you guys about something that just got released, and that is the Mr. Steel V2 motors. So I had the V1. They came out about this time last year. It was a 2306, 2345 KV motor. I was really lightweight. It weighed about 28 grams, uh, all aluminum construction, single winding, uh, laminated. Uh, yeah, yeah, I don't know. Just really, really nicely put together motor. Now. I had an idea that I wanted to fulfill and it ended up resulting in what people knew as the C-clip issue. Uh, there was not necessarily an issue but I tried to find a malleable C-clip so that you could change bells on the motor and in doing so we went through a bunch of different C-clips and ended up settling on a really stiff C-clip and actually unbeknownst to my knowledge you could have a C-clip that's too stiff and when you have a too stiff C-clip when you hit something really hard it actually kind of ricochets off and goes away. So. There have been some C-clip issues, but out of the 20 plus thousand motors that we've sold, it's very rare that you actually hear anything. Um, and there were certain batches that were, you know, some were better than others. Some people had never had an issue, and then some person had five motors that had an issue. So it was kind of hit or miss. But, you know, personally, I have never had a motor with a C-clip failed on me. Um, and I actually would pull bells off and replace bells and stuff with other C-clips because the C-clips that came with those motors were really difficult to work with. So, but, so let me talk about the V2 now that we've kind of gone over the V1. And my whole thing with the V1 is I wanted a motor that was very efficient and also powerful. And that's a huge balancing point between having too much power and not getting efficiency or having really good efficiency and not having enough power. Also pairing that with the propeller is another thing. It's a formula and this is kind of Another thing that I'll bring up later in this conversation is a company called Ethics LTD that I'll be um, pushing and really kind of going forward with. Uh, that is my new company. I'm starting up with Trappy Snake, Justin Thomas, uh, or Justin Power, sorry. His name's Thomas FPV, Snake FPV. Uh, and also Eric Konetsny, or Eric Konasty FPV, as you guys know him. And that is a company where essentially we'll be refining formulas. So, you know, the Mr. Steel Alien with the KISS hardware and, you know, the Triumph and all that stuff and the Mr. Steel motors, all that stuff is a formula that I've kind of perfected over the years and my whole idea of FPV is I want to be able to go out every day and not have to worry about tinkering and just messing with crap and always trying, oh what battery did you use, you know, what motor, did you, what prop did you use, you know, I don't care. I like, this thing flies really, really well. People say I fly outdated gear all the time. Well, you know, why am I so able to fly this outdated gear as hard as I am? I don't feel like there's too many people flying gear harder than me, and if they are, then they're always pushing the limits and trying to really refine their formula. Um, you know, it's it's a weird balancing act. You want something that you can go out and fly and not have to worry about fixing it every time, you're never going to get better. So again, let me not waste any more time because I've already been talking for a minute, and we will get right into the V2s. So the V2 motor, and let me let me move the camera so you guys can see more exactly what I'm talking about. All right, so. Quickly, let's go over the differences between the V1 and the V2. So, V2 motor, you'll see it has an aluminum shaft. It's a little bit higher profile in, in comparison to the V1, like the spokes are a little taller. You'll also notice that the spokes are thicker, and you'll also notice that it has an aluminum base and a C-clip on the bottom. See the C-clip in there? The C-clip is basically just a little piece of metal that holds the shaft onto the bottom half, which is the stator, because it needs to be free spinning, and the only way to hold things on there um, is either a C-clip or a screw. Uh, version 1 had a C-clip. Again, I'll talk about that later as far as why I went with the C-clip. But um, yeah, so let's talk about the V2. So here's the V2 motor. Again, we have a lower profile design. The bell is much lower. Um, just, you know, less rotating mass, a little bit lower, a little easier to spin. You know, it doesn't really come out to be any significant difference in flight characteristics, but it, it also is a lot tighter and looks a little better. Um, and it's less susceptible to like crash. It pr puts the prop, the prop line a little lower too. So I don't know, there's a bunch of benefits um, to having lower profile bell design. Now, the one thing that you'll probably notice based on just colors alone is that the shaft is a different color. Now, the shaft is a steel, 
it's a hollow steel shaft instead of an aluminum shaft and the reason I went with a hollow steel shaft instead of an aluminum shaft um, the reason I didn't go that with the V1 is because of weight but we kind of figured out how to reduce the weight by reducing some stuff in the bell like making it low profile um, but the problem with like a V1 bell and this is like a really old bell actually this has probably had you know probably 50 or, or I, I'd probably say more than that I would say 100 to 150 um, prop changes. Now that's a lot because I don't really change props a lot with these um, V1S props but you see how it's kind of marred up right there? So, so it's a little marred up right there and that's because you have an aluminum prop nut and you have an aluminum shaft and when you have two aluminum pieces even in the tolerances are perfect they're always going to be slightly off um, and that causes this marring and they're different tolerances, they're different um, hardnesses, you know, nothing's ever perfect with metallurgy, especially when you're talking about motors that are like $20 a piece. If we were talking about NASA grade aluminum, then it might be a little different, but it's always usually the same when it comes to aluminum on aluminum, you have issues. So if you have two different alloys, like a steel and an aluminum, then you're going to have a better time when it comes to screwing on one, because the steel is so much harder than the aluminum. If anything's going to break, it's going to be the prop nut, which is a lot cheaper to replace than your, your bell or your shaft. Now, with that said, it's actually pretty cool because I went with an aluminum, uh, or sorry, a steel shaft that's hollow all the way through, and it has a 1.5 millimeter Allen on the bottom. So you can replace the bell by just pulling off that 1.5 mil Allen on the bottom, and then the bell just goes boop, pops right off, and you can replace the bell or you know do whatever you need to do, service the engine, service the motor, or clean it, um, any kind of stuff like that. Now. These bearings are the newer bearings. Uh, the V1 actually had a different bearing in it, which to be honest is still a fantastic bearing. They make a lot of noise, but the tolerance is actually designed for in when it's in operating temperature, which is hot. So if you notice, if you have a bearing that's loud in a steel motor and you crank it up and just spin it on the motor's tab for like 30 seconds, it actually will get quiet because the tolerances in the, in, in the uh, motor or bearing actually expand and it becomes less jingly jangly in there and becomes a little bit better so it's designed to work under operating temperature which a lot of people don't know that and they spin it up on a really cold day and it sounds really loud and they're like oh my motors are so loud so you know there's differences with tech to tactics and whatnot so we went with a well, kind of a tighter tolerance bearing and it's a little bit better and we actually did that in the v1 but that's also in the v2 um, so the bearings are better, lower profile bell, you have the steel shaft, hollow aluminum, and this is, or hollow steel, sorry, and then you have the motor weight, which this is weighs naked like this, the bottom, pantsless bottom, um, it's about 28 and a half grams, which this is 28 and a half grams, so you're dealing with about the same weight. Now why did I go with the pantsless bottom versus the ones here that have the pants? I really, really prefer the pants because when you crash in dirt, like as you can see around here, there's dirt everywhere. When you crash in dirt and dig an arm in the ground, there's gonna be m mud all up inside your stator. Like it will just get all up inside there and you're gonna have a bad day. So how I remedied this problem is you can get a little bit lighter weight with a pantsless design, a little bit, a little, it's marginally lighter. But if you think about something like this, which is a polycarbonate piece that's specifically designed for this motor and it's made out of the same material that these props are made out of polycarbonate super durable and you slip it on underneath the motor Let's see if i can do this with one hand and it's keyed so it keys on there there we go there we go okay so it's keyed on there there's little keys on the bottom of this motor. It doesn't work on any every motor. It works on these motors only. So keys on there and it makes pants for the bottom of the motor. Now that's super, super cool because you can actually get away with not having pants on the motor but still having pants where you don't get mud inside the motor when you crash and dig an arm in the ground, right? So that's dope. Now I took it to the next level and it comes with, both of these pants come with the motors and this is a pant that has a protective outside. So the protective outside is again is a polycarbonate piece and it's super durable. You crash into stuff and it just bends the plastic, touches the motor and doesn't actually dent the motor. It's a really, really f unique, cool thing. Uh, I'm excited to do it, especially with some stuff that I'll be coming out with in the next six months. Um, this is going to be really crucial into the type of flying and stuff that I wanna get, wanna get into. So yeah, and uh, to do one last thing, if you'll notice on the bottom, all of these bolts are the same size. Are same distance apart. I went with a 19 by 19 
overall, all four are 19 millimeters apart. It's not 16 by 16 and 19 by 19, it's all 19 by 19 millimeters. So if you look on the bottom of the Alien, there's setups for 19 millimeters and 16 millimeters. You have all four options on the Alien. You could run all four 16 or you could run all four 19. And I figured instead of running all four 16, all four 19 having a wider stance because most people only run two screws is a much better option because I always ran the 19 millimeters apart. You have more leverage at 19 millimeters than you do at 60 millimeters, so that's why I went with 19 by 19. Um, and I guess one last thing, the V1 and the V2 are completely compatible. So if you wanted to get V2 bells and put them on the V1s and not have a C-clip anymore, you can totally just buy V2 bells, unscrew that and put it on your V1s and get rid of the C-clip entirely. If you have marred up shaft on your V1s, you can go and you can get a V2 bell and you can just put it on there and you have brand new bell um, with V2 everything, you just don't get the little pants. You have the same stator, same exact everything, same efficiency. It's the exact same motor, just completely redesigned and refined to meet all of the criteria that I felt that were wrong with the V1. Even though the V1 is still a really fantastic motor, this is a more refined version of that motor. All right, so talked about motors for a long time. Talk about one last thing. Um, I've been flying these for three months now, solid, have had no issues with them whatsoever. Um, haven't taken too many crashes with them, but I haven't had any problems. like out of balance or anything like that. These seem to stay in balance a little bit better because they don't have an aluminum shaft. Um, steel shaft seems to be a lot stronger and withstands hits a lot harder. It's also super low profile. You run in the low profile nuts. If you run an HQ prop, it's like perfectly flush. Um, and also there are little spikes on the top of this motor to keep the, like there, there are cases where like when you have a steel shaft, uh, it'll come loose when you hit something because the steel is so hard. Um, so there's little sticky things underneath the prop that kind of hold the prop in place even though if your nut isn't fully locked down it'll hold it in place. I want to talk about one last thing and that is where these are and where to find them. Uh, and so they, the V1 was a TBS product. V2 is actually a company called Ethics. E-T-H-I-X. L-T-D. Ethics Limited. Um, that's my company that I'll be starting with Trappy. Uh, F Snake FPV and Eric uh, Konetsny, which is Konasty FPV. So the four of us are uh, getting together and doing ethics, which is a basically a knowledge-based refining FPV is kind of our motto. So we're not necessarily bringing anything that's going to like you know throw thrust numbers through the roof or you know redesign some frame and make it like cutting edge technology crazy i mean yeah we're going to be pushing stuff forward making stuff that's going to be you know not not just rebranding crap and putting our names on it we're going to be coming out with really cool products that are going to push the hobby forward but at the same time you know i like to go out and i like to pick up a rig that i know is hasn't been flown in a couple weeks and I want to go out and fly it and I want it to be exactly the way that it was before I set it down and usually that is the case with all quads but you know sometimes it's not sometimes you might go out might be really hot out that day and you might burn out an ESC I know that this rig is super reliable and super consistent and I'm not gonna have any issues with it and that's why I've refined this rig right here the Mr. Steel Alien with KISS you know the steel V2s or whatever or V1 motors and then the Thunder Power Packs run cam you know, TBS Unify Pro 5 Volt, the steel PDB, all of that stuff is like super refined and works really well for me. And it seems to work really well for a lot of other people. So that's kind of the, that's kind of the baseline for ethics. Now it's gonna be teaching a lot of people like the knowledge that I've accumulated over the last four years is priceless, honestly, because you just can't, it's experience. You're, you go out and you experience stuff and then you learn a lot from that experience. and. The only way you can really teach stuff like that is to, you know, tell people about your experiences and there's like buses like parking all over the place. So teaching people about your experiences. So I've created this thing called the FPV Bible, which is kind of my last four years of experiences mixed in with Trappies, mixed in with Eric's, mixed in with Justin's, all of those things listed into like a thousand character document. It's kind of got all the common acronyms. It's got all of the things that I've learned as far as how to build a rig properly, how to make stuff where it's not going to break when you crash, you know, what to do when you're flying, always record with DVR. So all this really good information. Um, and we just put it up on our website. And the website is ethicsltd, so www.ethixltd.com. Um, and that website will be up in the next couple days. Uh, it probably will be up when this video comes out. 
and you'll be able to find all of the ethics products there so the steel v2 is actually an ethics product so you're gonna have to go to the ethics store uh, which we're using TBS's back end so you'll go to the ethics store and then it'll link you to a place where you can check out um, over at TBS for now and uh, yeah we have a lot of really cool race car buses apparently race bus with squeaky brakes you know but we have a lot of really cool stuff coming out so if you want to check it out ethicsltd.com and you know hawk pads for your bus <laughs>